Welcome back. Let's talk about sets and software. And why are we doing that? Well, basically there's a relationship between counting in binary and the power set. And there's also a relationship between binary operations and set operations. Okay. So uh, let's go through that. So we can use a, what we call a bit field or sometimes it's called a bit, bit vector to represent sets. This has, um, there's some advantages that has to do with these relationships I just kind of went through and we'll go through that. So let's uh, take some universe of elements and uh, I'm using household, common household pets here, cat, dog, fish, and a bird. So if you used four bits where one represents membership in the set and zero means you're not in the set, then you could represent this set or this universe with four bits, four ones, meaning there's a cat, there's a dog, there's a fish and a bird. So if you started generating subsets, like say you did, uh, you just wanted cat and dog, then that would be uh, a bit, um, the cat bit, the dog bit would be one and the other two bits would be zero. So it would be one, one, zero, zero using this bit field representation. Or another example, dog, fish would be uh, this bit and that bit, right, would be ones. The dog bit would be one, the fish bit would be one, and the cat bit would be zero, and the bird bit would be zero. So you'd have zero, one, 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 all right? So here, here's the insight that I started this lecture with, is that intersection is like bitwise and, and uh, union is like bitwise or, right? And the power set can be generated by counting on the bit field when you're dealing with binary. It's a little more complicated with other bases, but with binary, you just count. So those, these are very easy things to do in a computer, right? You can count, you know, super easy, very efficient operation counting. Also bitwise and and bitwise or are very fast operations. Okay, much faster than trying to do this at a higher level with arrays and stuff. Okay, so here's an example how showing how um, we could take these two sets, A, which is cat and dog, and B, which is dog and fish, and I could use bitwise and on them, and the result is, is like doing an intersection operation on the set, All right? So we're doing, uh, remember, uh, and requires two ones to be, uh, to, to, to generate a one. So this column here generates a one, because uh, that's the only column with two ones in it. All right, and this in this uh, pattern here, zero one zero zero one zero zero, represents in our universe represent representation. It means we have a one in the dog bit, so dog is in our set, and there's a zero on cat, fish, and bird. They're not in the set. Okay, so once again, just summary: the the set cat dog uh, intersection dog fish yields dog. And you get the same result by anding the bit fields. Okay. Here's another example of using a union and a union is like a uh, bitwise or. So remember bitwise or will return a one if either one of its inputs is one. So um, this column gives you zero, this column gives you one, this column gives you one, and this column gives you one. Um, go review or if you forget how or works. So, uh, yeah, basically by ORing these two sets together, we get this one, and, and this representation means we, uh, one, 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 zero means we have cat, dog, fish, and no bird. Okay, so um, taking the union of cat and dog with dog and fish, you get cat, dog, fish. Okay, so a bitwise AND and a bitwise OR are very fast operations in a computer. They're done in hardware in one cycle, very fast. Okay, um, let's talk about the power set, which is the counting thing that I was referring to like earlier. Okay, so what is uh, the power uh, set for the universe uh, above? It's the power set of the universe. Remember, remember the power set, what is the power set? The power set is the set of all possible subsets. Right, so we could generate the empty set would be one element and then there'd be a set consisting of just cat and then a set consisting of just dog 
and then a set consisting of just bird and a set consisting of, of just fish. And then there'd be sets that have two of these and there'd be several of those. And then there'd be sets that have three of these. If you counted them all up, there'd, there'd be 16 sets, including the empty set, but we can generate them just by counting, right? So here they are. The, there's um, the power set of the universe is the empty set, and then all the sets consisting of one element, bird, fish, and a bunch more. And then all the elements consisting of, of uh, two elements, and, and then all the elements, all the uh, sets consisting of three elements, and then the set consisting of all four elements. Basically, you could just generate those by counting on, on the bit field. Right, zero 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 is the empty set. Zero 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 one is bird. Right, zero 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 one would be just bird, and uh, zero zero one zero, which is binary two, is um, is just is just fish, and etc. So you count all the way up to one 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 one. You've generated every possible subset of this universe just by counting. Okay, and counting is a very fast operation in a computer, also typically done in one cycle, incrementing, basically. So in binary, in the binary bit fields, these are, these are the representations, and the equivalent decimal representations would just be 0 through 15. So you can see how there's 16 of these, right? Uh, 0 through 15 is 16. So the cardinality of the power set of this universe is it's 16. It happens to be 2 to the... Um, two to the uh, four or two to the cardinality of the universe. Okay. So, um, yeah, hey, that's what I wrote down here. All right, so keep on going on this stuff here. So here's another, here's another example. Um, let's take a smaller, a smaller set and uh, let's stick with this four bit representation for the universe all right four bit representation for the universe what is it cat dog bird fish right cat dog bird fish cat dog fish bird I'm gonna put this over here cat dog fish bird um, so um, If we had, um, if we had our set A from before, that was just cat dog. In this universe, the representation would be one one zero zero, because our our universe is cat dog fish bird, right? Cat dog fish bird. So if we just have a one for cat and a one for dog and a zero for fish and a zero for bird, we get one one zero zero. Okay, so this 1100 represents set A in this bit field representation for a 4-bit universe. Okay, so what would be the power set of A? So it's a little more complicated to generate the power set of A. You can't just count, but you could still do just sort of a manual figuring out of the permutations like we did previously. Um, this is a small set, just cat, dog. What are the permutations? Well, just sort of manually, like using a human brain, kind of figure out what the permutations are. Well, it's going to be the empty set, and then it's going to be dog, then it's going to be cat, then it's going to be cat, dog. Right? That's this line right here is all the permutations that are possible with uh, with this uh, this little set A here, this little cat, dog set. Just sort of manually thinking it through. Okay, no no algorithm or anything. But then what are the uh, what are the binary representations using our four bit universe of these of these sets? Well, empty set would be zero 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 and dog would be this bit, the dog bit would be one. The set cat would be this bit, the cat bit in our four bit universe. And then the cat dog set would be these two bits in our four bit universe. So those correspond just um, just as an aside, really, these these bit patterns correspond to 0, 4, 8, and 12. There's no, you know, real significance of, uh, you know, we had to manually generate, manually generate this, this, uh, these permutations. And then I'm looking, and then I'm sort of translating these permutations and using our four-bit universe 
and then looking at them in decimal. There's, there's no algorithm or really no significance because uh, it's just a random set. But um, we can say this about it. We can say that uh, there, uh, what's the cardinality of this thing? There's four sets of in the power set of A, right? There's one, two, three, four, four sets in the cardinality of A. So the, um, or there's, I misspoke, there's four elements in the uh, power set A, so the cardinality of the power set A is four. And um, that's what this is saying. The cardinality of the power set A is, is four, given by two raised to the power of the original set, uh, the cardinality of the original set A. So set A has two elements in it, has a cardinality of two, so, uh, Two to the cardinality of a, or two to the two to the two. I shouldn't have these. I shouldn't have these lines on here. It should just be two to the. This should just be two to the two, as four. So we can say that that there's four elements in the power set A because there's two elements in set A, and we have this two to the. You know power, this power relationship here. Okay, but what about generating these these guys right here? I just did it manually, but you can do it on a with an algorithm, and I have an algorithm here I'd like to go through with you, and this is what you're gonna implement in the homework, right? So let me just talk through this, and then I'll pull the code up and talk about it a little bit. So, so here's an algorithm to generate the power set of any subset of this four-bit universe. Okay, so I've got a four-bit universe cat, dog, fish, bird, cat, dog, fish, bird, and um, I'm gonna take a subset, call it A, just an arbitrary subset, and we wanna generate the power set for A. So the insight is that we can use a compressed representation of A, having the cardinality of A bits Okay, so in this, this example, we're using 1010. Let's use that, which is what? Um, in our cat, dog, fish, bird, 1010 is cat, comma, uh, fish. In the same, using this order, cat, dog, fish, bird, 1010. So this is cat, dog, fish, bird in our four bit representation. That has a cardinality of two. So two. So B will have two bits. And we're just gonna count on, on, uh, on B. That's the insight. Because if B, we count zero, zero, that's the empty set. Zero, one, if you use this order, is fish. One, zero is cat. And one, one is catfish. All right, so this is the empty set. This is the set consisting of just fish. This is the empty set or uh, sorry, this is the set consisting of just cat. And this is the set consisting of cat and fish. Okay, so we're just counting on B from zero in uh, to three in decimal. So this is a very easy thing to do, count, right? That's the insight, is that counting is permutations, permutations are counting. And counting is subsets, subsets are counting. If we do it on the compressed set, then all we have to do is expand expand these this two-bit representation into the four-bit representation let me uh let me squeeze that over here so ex expanding this into four bits would be zero 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 right expanding this into four bits would be just the fish the fish position which is um that uh is that that's the fish position in our four-bit universe expanding this into cats would be um uh, it's the first the first thing is the cat thing and expanding this into cats and fishes would be that one okay so that's basically the algorithm we're going to have we're going to have an outer loop on b right we're going to we're just going to count from uh, 0 to 3 or really 0 to um, 2 raised to the cardinality of original set A minus one, right? right? And then the inner loop, we need to do a couple of things. We, we need to, um, 
we need to check uh, who uh, who is in A, and then when we find that, we need to see if the corresponding element is in B, and if it is, we need to add it to that element of the power set. Okay, so let's see. Let me just read through this and see if I missed anything. Um, yeah, we're just going to count on B. We're going to expand those, what I'm calling the compressed representation of A. That's what B is. B is the compressed representation of A. We need to expand that. And the way that we do that is we look for each one bit in A. That is, we scan, we scan set A and look for a one. And when we found it, we check in the corresponding B set, the compressed set, for that one. And if it's there, right, if it's in B, then we insert it into the element of the power set that we're working on. Okay, I guess that's these guys. These are elements of the of P of A in, in, comp in comp well, both of these are elements of P of A. This is just in compressed format, and this is, uh, this is an expanded format, I know, sort of. All of these are, these are elements of A. All of these, this is just compressed format here, and this is expanded format here. All right, let's look at the um, algorithm execution on paper a little bit. Right, and then we'll uh, we'll look at it in in code. I'll pull the code up and see if there's anything left to talk about. So, okay, so we're gonna do this same. Uh, that's the same thing, right? That's uh, catfish, the cat bit, and the fish bit, catfish. Don't worry. Let's not worry about that anymore. But this is just some subset A of the universe. That, you know, it has this guy and this guy in the order of things in the universe, right? And there's two elements in that guy. Therefore, there's going to be four elements in the power set. So we need a compressed uh, two-bit set. So B will be the compressed two-bit set, and it's going to count from 0 to 3 and generate all the permutations, right? So we're going to count from 0 to 3 on a compressed two-element set. Right, it's a two element set because there's only two elements in A. And then we're going to expand those into these elements of the power set in four bit representation. Right? This so zero zero becomes all zeros. Zero one, there's a one here in this in this first position for for A. And then the one zero, there's a one here in the second position for A, scanning that way. Scanning from small, you know, from right to left, from small to big. And then for this compressed representation of of a set we got to expand that into this so this is power um, power set um, of a uh, number zero these are all the power sets of a uh, zero one two three pa zero through pa three okay so here's the execution for two two loops so b is going to go from zero to three zero one two three and i just did the, the zero and one so this is the outer loop executing and then you've got an inner loop that's going four times oh this should be a three right here okay it's going from zero to three okay and what you're doing on the uh, iteration of the inner loop is you're just using this mask you're just taking a one and scooting it down every time. Taking this one and then scooting it down here and then you're scooting it down here and then you're scooting it down here using a bit shift operator. And what you're doing is you're checking for these ones in A. So there's, this is A on the top every time, set A. And you're, you're just checking. And when you find uh, a, a one, you need to check if that element is present in B. Okay, so you use a mask, a similar mask, a one-bit mask that you're scooting down by one. There's one there, then you scoot it down, you scoot the one down by here and check it over here for this guy. But, but so if you find a if you find a uh, a one here in this position, then you check this, and this one happens to be false, so you don't do anything. So then you scoot the one down again, you get false. You scoot the one down again, you get true. So now you check. The second position in in uh, in B, 
That means we needed to scoot this mask down here. So the logic is a little, like when you do the scooting is a little confusing. But I've put that in the notes in the code to help you out with that. Um, so that was zero zero, which is the empty set. So you 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 just get nothing in the in the answer. But um, you're, by the way, you're always going to get nothing for 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 zero zero. You really don't even need to check. But just trying to show the algorithm. If you wanted to optimize it, you could count from zero, from one to to three because you know zero is always going to be the empty set. But anyway. What about this? So now we're counting to one. Okay, so we reset our mask here. All right, don't forget to reset. You reset your mask, and then you, you, go, you put it in a loop, and you're scooting one down here, you're scooting it down, then you're scooting it down again, and you're scooting it down again. Then you're basically checking for, is there a one in this column? And there isn't. You're checking, is there a one in this column? There is. So then you check the corresponding element in the compressed set with this mask. And that's true, which means you've got this element in the compressed set. Okay, so you need to ex you need to insert that element into the expanded power set element by using an OR, using a bitwise OR. So you just uh, you just OR in the mask will work. This mask up here. Or that into your answer, PA, PA1 is the answer we're working on for this iteration. Or it in. And uh, that's the answer. Well, because this is false. But you, what you would, you would or this in, and then you'd keep the loop, this loop here would keep iterating, and you'd, 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 move, you'd scoot this down, you'd get a false, you'd scoot this down, and you'd get a, get a true. Okay, you get a true here, so then you check the next position in, B, okay, and uh, it's false, so uh, so you don't do the insert. So then, then you would print it, okay. Um, you know, if this turned out to be true here, then you know you would do another or and print and print those, you know, the PA element PA one, you know, that would have two bits in it. But this one turned out to be false. Okay, then you just repeat like that. Okay, so um, I hope you're getting this. I, it, it, I've found students take mm, a little while to get this sometimes, but um, it's important. What we're doing, let me just say over again, we're just counting on a compressed set, and then we're doing this expansion. Now, that's probably the easiest thing conceptually to get, but, but the thing with the bits, like the checking, and uh, the, you're, the checking in the, uh, in the uh, you're checking for positions in the, uh, in the unexpanded set A, and if you find them, if you find these ones in the unexpanded set A, then you check the corresponding bit in the compressed set. And uh, if you if that turns out to be true, you insert that that bit uh, into the answer. That's it. It's pretty simple. Now to help you out, I've um, I've given you some code because the tricky part is when do you advance these these uh, these bit masks? When do you shift them and and when do you reset them and things? So I put some comments in the code. So I'm gonna switch over to my monitor and um, and go through that. Okay, I have the homework instructions pulled up here. Set implementation. Let's go through those things. So I've got a universe that's eight bit. And the reason we're using 8-bit is because we can use a character, an 8-bit character, uh, to represent a set. All right, um, I've given you some helper code that will help you with input and output of elements into a set. So the first function I've given you that's done for you, it will take a 8-bit um, bit field, which we're just going to use a character. Remember, a character is just an 8-bit value. And we're going to, um, uh, it'll, so this function will print out the strings that are in that. So it'll print out, you know, chimp and fish and whatever's in that 8 bit uh, bit field or bit vector. Uh, okay, I'm using the terms bit vector and bit field interchangeably. Um, what I mean is an 8 bit character. Okay, there are higher level vector objects 
don't use those. Just use an 8-bit character that I'm calling a bit vector or a bit field. All right, and then I've got a function that goes the opposite way, that if you take a, uh, a string and, and call the insert function, it'll set the corresponding bit in the 8-bit bit, bit field. All right, now what I want you to do is implement these set operations here. Now, most of these are very short. They're like one line of code, right? Because intersection, union, there's, there's a, you know, there's a, there's and and or that'll do that for you in one line, right? Same thing with difference. No, no. Same thing with complement. Okay, difference is a little more complicated, and so is these is a, is a subset and is a proper subset. But if you look in the notes, there is, there are ways to define these operations, difference and is a subset in terms of simpler operations. Okay, so still it's it's a couple of binary operations to do to do the these things. It's either one or maybe a couple to do all of these. Okay, what about set cardinality? What do you have to do? Well, you need to count the bits. Okay, and the easiest way to do that is with a a, a one bit bit field, and you check using and using bitwise and you check for the presence of a bit. And if you, if you, if that bit is present, then you increment a counter and then you loop, you know, you iterate and you scoot the bit down and, and you check again like that. Okay. There's code in this handout that I'm going to give you that does bits shifting and things like that, that you can take apart and use those and help you write these other guys. Okay, then there's printing the power set, and that's the, the hardest one. That's the algorithm I just went through previously. All right, so um, then, so first thing I want you to do is write all these operations, and then the next thing I want you to do is perform a couple of operations on these sets. So I want you to first create these sets. So you're going to call insert, you know, insert cat, insert dog, insert fish, and you'll get set A. Then. Uh, Make another set and call insert three times and you know insert liger dog and cat insert those and then perform this all of these operations down in here but the first operation what is that so this is a union b intersection c complement the tilde means complement so um this is set notation expression for for this uh this, these series of operations, but to, to put it in your program, you need to use function call syntax, All right? So this is the equivalent function call syntax. So we're doing union first. So that's inside here. We get to do union first, get back an answer, and then you know calculate the complement, and then send both of those answers to intersection, right? That's the order of operations for this. Okay, so I want you to write equivalent expressions for all of these guys and, and, and run those out and then do a couple more. All right, let's run through the code here and see, see what we got to talk about there. So um, I've got this code that's posted. It's, um, it's got most of the stuff you need, but there's some things you need to implement. So first of all, we've got the universe here. So this is an 8-bit universe stored in a character. Oh, wait a minute. No, this is the string table. Yeah, this is not the universe. This is the string table. For, for, a, for a set, all you need is a, is a character. But this is, a, this is just the strings that, so we can print out in human readable text who's in, the, who's in a set. So you can think of this thing that I've got highlighted as a two-dimensional character array. Or you can think of it as a one-dimensional string array. Okay, the 10 right here represents the maximum length of the string, right? So I think uh, turtle is six, that's the biggest string, but we could go up to 10. And uh, eight represents the each string. So zero is, uh, is bat, one is cat, and then turtle is seven. Okay, so this is a, it's a string table, you could call it. That's what most people call it most of the time. All right. Um, I've got uh, this print set function that you can just use, and it, it might have some code that's helpful for you. Like here, I've got a loop where I'm incrementing and shifting at the same time. That might be useful for counting the, 
bits in, in, uh, to determine the cardinality of a set. And uh, this guy was in some other code I've, that you guys have seen in the previous homework, just to print out all the bits in a, uh, in a character, just to see what they are. Basically to see the binary representation of a character. Then um, there's this insert function that I've given to you. Now, I don't want to forget about covering this, so I'm going to cover it now. Um, but this basically inserts a string, like say chimp, for example, into an 8-bit set. Um, and you're going to have to expand this to work with a 32-bit universe, right? So I want you to get this program working with 8 bits, and this function works already with 8 bits, but then I want you to get the whole program working with 32 bits, and you're gonna to have to modify this function. But how does this function work? Well, if you called it like this, as I have highlighted, if you called it with a set A, and you wanted to insert chimp into the set A, it needs to set bit two, because that two position is the you know, index of chimp, okay? So it needs to figure out that two. And the way that I did that is by using hashing. So here's a sample calculation. Uh, the ASCII value of, of C is 67 and the ASCII value of I is 105. And I have a, uh, I have a hash function down here that's looking at the, the zeroth digit and the two digit, which is capital value C and lowercase i. So this hash function down here, it's, it's just arbitrary. I just made it up. You can make up other ones, but I just decided to add together the C and the I, and then mod by 20. And if you do that, then um, you get 67 plus 105. Those are the ASCII values. And then mod by 20, you get 12. And then you look in this lookup table here, and I've hard-coded these. Uh, to give me the indexes I want. So element 12 is this guy. So I'm counting 0 through 9 and, and then 0 and 1. So 12 is, you know, this row and this column. It's this 2 right here. Okay, so once again, you just add C plus I and mod by 20. You get an index into G. And then at that, in, at that index location, which is 12, I get the two that I need. Okay, so I, you, have to, you have to run this hash function on all of the, uh, all of the words that you're trying to fix and then, and then uh, insert manually, insert these numbers into this G table. That's, a, that's how you set up a manual hash table like this, all right? But it's set up to work with our 8-bit universe. So anyway, you pass chimp into here, goes through this calculation, gets the two. Then I generate, uh, I generate a mask by shifting a one down by two. Index is two, and this ha uh, hexadecimal eight zero is what? It's one zero 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 zero. So it's just a one leftmost bit one, shift it down to two, and then or that into the set. Okay, that's hashing. Now you could expand this to work with the 32-bit universe. You might need a bigger G, okay? And you'd have to manually uh, figure out these G values to get it to get it the right indexes back into your 32-bit universe. Okay, there's that. Then, um, Let's see, so these are the functions I want you to write. Union, you can do that in one line. There's a binary operation that'll do that. Same with intersection, same with complement. Okay, difference, you can express that in terms of simpler operations or other operations. Okay, cardinality, you need to write a loop and you need to scan for bits in, the, in set A, all right? Okay, then there's the power set algorithm. Let's, uh, let's come back to that. Um, yeah, there's is subset and pro is proper subset. Implement those, please. Once again, you can, def you can uh, 
def you can uh, define these guys in terms of simpler operations and get that to work. Then uh, down in main, I want you to write all the testing code that I'm asking for. But here, this is just a small sample of the testing code. Um, here, I'm making a little set that has a bat, a cat, a chimp, and a snake in it. And then I'm making another set that has a chimp, a fish, and a liger in it. And then uh, oh, I'm making a third set, right? Making some more sets. And then I'm, I'm doing a little thing here. I'm doing, you know, I'm unioning A and B and then... You know, I think that's one of the, that's the first problem I'm asking you to do, right? And then I'm, uh, I'm checking that subset and is a proper subset. I'm checking that they work and then I call the power set somewhere, somewhere, you know. Okay, so do this, but for all the expressions that I've given you. Okay, the thing that we've been waiting for, what is the, how does this power set work? Okay, make sure you've watched the previous part of this out of this video where I've talked about how this works, but Let's go through that again. So let's say we have a little set, A, an 8-bit set that has two elements in it. It has this guy in it, whoever he is, and this guy in it, whoever he is. Okay, there's two bits in that. So we can make a compressed set that would have two bits. Okay, then all we gotta do is count on that compressed set from zero to three. And then for each counting, that's the outer loop, we're going to expand that back into the 4-bit representation. So this 00, 0 expands into all of these zeros. Zero, 01 expands into this thing because there's a 1 in, the, in that position in the expanded set. And then this guy here expands into this, these things because there's a 1 in this, in this position of the, uh, in this position here of the expanded set. Likewise, this guy expands into that. All right, so here's the here's the code. I, you know, you've got an outer loop where you're just counting. In this instance, you're counting from zero to three. That's the outer loop. Okay, then you need some masks. You need a four-bit mask and a two-bit mask. Then you're going to loop. In this case, four times because you're scanning through set A and you're scanning using our one bit or uh, our uh, ooh, wait a minute I said four it should be eight here you're gonna loop eight I was thinking about the example in the notes which is four but here we're, we've got eight yeah so did I, I might have spoken earlier no I might have said four when I meant eight sorry about that but anyway look you're gonna loop through uh, eight and you're basically, this mass is going to scoot from this position, you know, all the way to a one on the left. I think I'm doing it. I think I started on the left, right? I used, I used eight. Oh yeah, here, here I'm using, I'm using uh, rightmost bit one. There was an eight somewhere, I think up in the comments. Well, anyway, um, looks like I'm starting on the right and scooting to the left instead of the left and scooting to the right, which I think I saw somewhere else. So uh, anyway, uh, scoot, start on the left and then, you know, this guy will scoot down. And if it's true, you know, if there's a, this one here lines up with this one here, you'll get a true because it's non-zero. Non, it's true. Any non-zero value is true. Then you need to check in B mask. So there's an if clause in there. And uh, you need to check for that position in the B mask. And uh, if it's false, you um, you don't do anything. And if it's true, so this is the else clause, right? This is the else clause. If, it, if it's true, you or the the A mask into your answer, which I'm calling sub A. Okay, and then there's some shifting going on here. You got to do it in the right spot. Like here's where you shift the B mask. You only shift the B mask if you get a true on the on the A mask check. Okay, and then after you've checked the A mask position, you scoot it down to the left. Okay, this is basically almost done for you. You just need to put a few logical operations in there. 
So you can get this done with still being kind of foggy on exactly how it works, okay? Hopefully it'll be clear to you on what it's working, but it, you can still get it done. All right. Um, yeah, and then there's here's where you reset the uh, the masks. Okay, that's it. Um, you know, study the bits of C, and if you think this is C, or if you think it's C plus plus, whatever you think it is, study the bits of code that uh, you don't understand. You know, study the notes. You know, have a snack, maybe take a nap. Come back, look at it some more. Don't wait to the last minute. All right. I hope this was helpful to you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.